Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Andrew, I'm very thankful to learn from you, to have learned from you, and to continue to learn from you. I just appreciate your boldness in the truth. Don't stop it. And I don't think you will. <laughs> and now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm beginning a brand new series talking about lessons from Joseph. And I tell you, Joseph is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. We've actually got kind of a trilogy that we're offering. We got lessons from Joseph, lessons from Elijah, and lessons from David. Now, I've taught on David and Elijah uh, recently, but I think it was 2016 is the last time I taught on Joseph. And I tell you, Joseph is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He is just awesome. You know, the Bible is very descriptive of people, and it doesn't present them in a whitewashed version. It shows all of their problems, like Moses killed a man thinking he was doing God's will. He got angry and smoked the rock, and it showed you that that was the reason that he was kept out of the Promised Land. Uh, Elijah, he, he called fire down out of heaven, did all of these great things, but then he got so uh, caught up in pride that he ran from Jezebel and asked God to kill him, and God took uh, the ministry away from him and gave it to Elisha. David, of course, was a man after God's own heart, and it shows so many positive things about David, but it also shows you his failures where he committed adultery and then murdered trying to cover up his adultery. And so the Bible does not whitewash these characters at all. It presents them with all of their warts, with all of their failures, and there's things that we can learn, good and bad, from them. But Joseph is one of those characters, one of only two characters in the Bible that, according to my understanding, uh, two characters that were never rebuked, and that's uh, Samuel and Joseph. Samuel was a very godly leader, and um, God used him in a powerful way, and Joseph was never rebuked. Now, some people are going to disagree with that and say, well, Joseph was a spoiled brat, and he uh, promoted himself above his brethren, and he, it was his arrogance that got him in trouble and did all of this. And then some people interpret that Joseph, when his brothers came into Egypt, and uh, he treated them so badly that this was him getting even with them. That is inconsistent with what the Word of God teaches. Now, I think that the reason some people have come up with those things is because what they do, they judge Joseph by what they would have done if they had been mistreated the way that Joseph was, and they just impose their own uh, personality upon him. But the Bible doesn't teach this. Matter of fact, the Bible teaches that, man, Joseph humbled himself. I'm going to show you some things that I believe will give you revelation about the life of Joseph that will inspire you and really help you. It says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It also says in 1 Peter chapter 5, I believe it's around verse 5, that God resists the proud, but He gives grace unto the humble. If Joseph would have been this proud, spoiled, arrogant uh, child that a lot of people have interpreted his actions as, well, then I guarantee he never would have seen the promotion that we see recorded in Scripture. So I'm going to go into greater detail doing this, but according to my understanding of Scripture, Joseph is somebody who was never rebuked. He was never had any major failings in his life. He just served God and is a great example. Let me read these Scriptures out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 before I go over to Genesis where the story of Joseph is and use this just to say that you have to take these things that we're going to be saying about Joseph and you have to make an application of this to your life. Otherwise, what's the benefit of talking about something that happened 4,000 years ago unless it impacts us today? And see, there's a lot of people that this is the way that they look at Scripture. They, they read things like this and say, what does this have to do with me? Man, I'm struggling to make my ends meet. I'm trying to get relationships to work. And they're just thinking about their situation and say, what is something that happened to somebody 4,000 years ago have to do with me? Well, let me read these scriptures to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It was talking about the children of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt. 
AND IT SAYS IN VERSE 6, NOW THESE THINGS WERE OUR EXAMPLES TO THE INTENT THAT WE SHOULD NOT LUST AFTER EVIL THINGS AS THEY ALSO LUSTED. NEITHER BE YE IDOLATERS AS WERE SOME OF THEM, AS IT IS WRITTEN, THE PEOPLE SAT DOWN TO EAT AND DRINK AND ROSE UP TO PLAY. NEITHER LET US COMMIT FORNICATION AS SOME OF THEM COMMITTED AND FELL IN ONE DAY THREE AND TWENTY THOUSAND. NEITHER LET US TEMPT CHRIST AS SOME OF THEM ALSO TEMPTED AND WERE DESTROYED OF SERPENTS. NEITHER MURMUR YE AS SOME OF THEM ALSO MURMURED AND WERE DESTROYED OF THE DESTROYER. NOW ALL OF THESE THINGS HAPPENED UNTO THEM FOR EXAMPLES AND WERE WRITTEN FOR OUR ADMONITION UPON WHOM THE ENDS OF THE WORLD ARE COME. SO THESE VERSES, ESPECIALLY VERSES 6 AND 11, SAY THAT EVERYTHING THAT WAS RECORDED IN THE OLD TESTAMENT WAS RECORDED FOR OUR BENEFIT SO THAT WE WOULD LEARN THROUGH THEM WHAT TO DO AND WHAT NOT TO DO, SO THAT WE WOULD LEARN NOT TO MURMUR AND COMPLAIN, NOT TO LUST, NOT TO COMMIT FORNICATION. YOU KNOW, I'M SAYING THIS IN LOVE. I'M NOT AGAINST ANY PERSON, BUT THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM TODAY THAT YOU HAVE COMMITTED FORNICATION. YOU DO MURMUR. YOU COMPLAIN. AND YOU ARE BEING DESTROYED, AND YOU JUST CAN'T UNDERSTAND WHY. IF YOU WOULD GO TO THE WORD OF GOD AND SEE THE, what, the THINGS THAT WORKED, THE THINGS THAT GOD REWARDED, AND ALSO SEE THE THINGS THAT JUST GAVE SATAN INROAD INTO PEOPLE'S LIVES TO DESTROY THEM, WE CAN LEARN THROUGH THEM, AND YOU DON'T HAVE TO LEARN EVERYTHING BY HARD KNOCKS. AGAIN, YOU KNOW, MY LIFE, I HAVE BEEN SUPER BLESSED. I GOT BORN AGAIN WHEN I WAS EIGHT YEARS OLD. I'VE SAID THIS MANY TIMES, BUT I'VE NEVER uh, SAID A WORD OF PROFANITY. I'VE NEVER TAKEN A DRINK OF LIQUOR. I'VE NEVER SMOKED A CIGARETTE. I HAVE LIVED A SEPARATED LIFE. I'M NOT SAYING THAT THAT EARNS ME ANYTHING WITH GOD BECAUSE ALL OF SIN COMES SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. I DON'T WANT TO BE THE BEST SINNER THAT EVER WENT TO HELL. I HAD TO GET SAVED JUST LIKE ANYBODY ELSE. SO I'M NOT SAYING THAT TO PAT MYSELF ON THE BACK, BUT I'M SAYING THAT THE REASON THAT I HAVEN'T GONE INTO ADULTERY AND INTO DOPE ADDICTION AND INTO DRUGS AND INTO REBELLION AND INTO THOSE THINGS IS BECAUSE I HAVE STUDIED THE WORD OF GOD FROM THE TIME THAT I WAS A CHILD, AND IT WARNED ME AND TAUGHT ME THESE THINGS. AND THIS IS ONE OF THE BENEFITS OF STUDYING THESE PEOPLE'S LIVES. WE CAN SEE THINGS IN THEIR LIVES AND MAKE DIRECT APPLICATION TO OUR LIVES THAT KEEP US FROM HAVING TO LEARN EVERYTHING BY HARD KNOCKS. I REMEMBER AS A YOUNG MAN, I, I DON'T REMEMBER HOW OLD I WAS, BUT I MEAN, I WAS YOUNG. AND I REMEMBER READING ABOUT DAVID AND HOW HE WAS A MAN AFTER GOD'S OWN HEART AND HOW DAVID WAS JUST SO PURE IN HIS HEART, WENT OUT AND FOUGHT GOLIATH AND DID ALL OF THESE GREAT THINGS. BUT THEN HE TOOK HIS EYES OFF OF THE LORD. HE GOT INTO SIN WITH Bathsheba. HE WOUND UP kidding, KILLING Bathsheba's HUSBAND. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, uh, HIS SON AMNON WAS KILLED BY ANOTHER SON ABSALOM, AND THEN ABSALOM WAS EVENTUALLY KILLED, AND ADONIJAH, ANOTHER SON, WAS KILLED. A DAUGHTER OF HIS, TAMAR, WAS RAPED. ALL OF THESE TERRIBLE THINGS HAPPENED BECAUSE HE LET SATAN INTO HIS LIFE AND INTO HIS FAMILY THROUGH HIS SIN. AND I LIVED VICARIOUSLY THROUGH DAVID, AND I LEARNED THROUGH THAT NOT TO DO THIS. I REMEMBER AS A VERY YOUNG GUY JUST SEEING THE DEVASTATION THAT ADULTERY HAD ON DAVID AND ON HIS FAMILY. AND I LEARNED THROUGH THAT. I DIDN'T HAVE TO GO LEARN IT BY HARD KNOCKS. I'M NOT SAYING THIS TO BE CRITICAL OF ANY OF YOU, BUT THERE ARE SOME OF YOU WATCHING THAT. I GUARANTEE YOU IT'S JUST LIKE... You... <laughs> I'M SAYING THIS AGAIN IN LOVE. IT MAY NOT SOUND LIKE IT, BUT I PRAY YOU'LL STICK WITH ME. BUT YOU'RE LIKE A GOOSE. YOU JUST WAKE UP IN A NEW WORLD EVERY MORNING. IT'S LIKE YOU HAVE NO HISTORY. YOU DON'T KNOW WHAT HAS HAPPENED TO OTHER PEOPLE. AND YOU GO OUT AND YOU HAVE TO LEARN FOR YOURSELF THAT BEING A DOPE ADDICT IS WRONG, THAT BEING AN ALCOHOLIC IS WRONG, THAT BEING AN ADULTERER IS WRONG. YOU JUST GO AND INDULGE YOURSELF, AND THEN ONLY AFTER YOU'VE SUFFERED ALL OF THIS PAIN AND ALL OF THIS SUFFERING DO YOU COME AROUND AND SAY, MAN, I SHOULDN'T HAVE DONE THAT. I CAN TELL YOU, YOU CAN GO TO THE WORD OF GOD AND LEARN THESE THINGS AT OTHER PEOPLE'S EXPENSE. YOU KNOW, I'VE OFTEN SAID THAT YOU CAN LEARN THINGS BY HARD KNOCKS. I CERTAINLY HAVE, BUT THERE'S A BETTER WAY. AND YOU KNOW WHAT THAT BETTER WAY IS? I OFTEN SAY THAT IT'S Karis BIBLE COLLEGE BECAUSE WE HAVE ALL OF THESE INSTRUCTORS THAT HAVE OVER A THOUSAND YEARS OF MINISTRY EXPERIENCE, AND WE BRING ALL OF OUR GOOD AND BAD TO BEAR AND SHARE THINGS WITH YOU SO THAT, PRAISE GOD, YOU DON'T HAVE TO LEARN THINGS THE HARD WAY, THE WAY THAT SOME OF US HAVE. 
AND SO I SAY ALL OF THESE THINGS AS INTRODUCTION THAT THIS IS WHY IT'S IMPORTANT TO STUDY THE LIVES OF THESE PEOPLE. AND AGAIN, IN MY ESTIMATION, uh, I JUST LOVE JOSEPH. I HAVE GOTTEN SO MUCH FROM HIM. AND IF YOU WILL LISTEN TO THIS ENTIRE SERIES, THIS COULD BE A DEAL CHANGER FOR YOU. THERE ARE MANY OF YOU JUST WONDERING, GOD, HOW DO I GET FROM WHERE I AM TO WHERE I'M SUPPOSED TO BE? BOY, JOSEPH WENT FROM THE PIT TO THE PALACE IN LESS THAN 24 HOURS. BUT THERE WAS A 13-YEAR INCUBATION PERIOD BEFORE THAT TRANSFORMATION HAPPENED. AND THERE'S THINGS THAT WE CAN LEARN THROUGH HIM THAT WOULD APPLY TO YOU AND ME AND JUST SAVE YOU A LOT OF SUFFERING. THIS IS ACTUALLY THE ANSWER TO A LOT OF PEOPLE'S PRAYERS IF YOU WILL RECEIVE IT. I REALLY BELIEVE THAT. SO ANYWAY, ALL OF THAT'S INTRODUCTION. THE STORY OF JOSEPH STARTS IN GENESIS CHAPTER 37 AND IN VERSE 2 IT SAYS, THESE ARE THE GENERATIONS OF JACOB. JACOB WAS JOSEPH'S FATHER. JACOB uh, WRESTLED WITH AN ANGEL, AND THE ANGEL CHANGED HIS NAME TO ISRAEL. AND uh, SO JACOB IS CALLED JACOB AND ISRAEL. BUT IT SAYS IN GENESIS 37, 2, THESE ARE THE GENERATIONS OF JACOB. JOSEPH, BEING 17 YEARS OLD, WAS FEEDING THE FLOCK WITH HIS BRETHREN, AND THE LAD WAS WITH THE SONS OF BILHAH AND WITH THE SONS OF Zilphah, HIS FATHER'S WIVES, AND JOSEPH BROUGHT UNTO HIS FATHER THEIR EVIL REPORT. JACOB ACTUALLY HAD FOUR WIVES. HE TOOK RACHEL TO BE HIS WIFE, AND I I JUST HADN'T GOT TIME TO GO BACK AND SHARE THIS WHOLE STORY, BUT HE WOUND UP MARRYING RACHEL AND HER SISTER LEAH, AND THEN EACH ONE OF THEM HAD SLAVES, BILHAH AND Zilpha, AND SO JACOB WOUND UP WITH FOUR WIVES AND 12 CHILDREN. JOSEPH WAS THE 11TH OF THE 12 CHILDREN THAT HE HAD. HE HAD ONE YOUNGER BROTHER NAMED BENJAMIN, AND THAT IS GOING TO FACTOR BIG TIME INTO THIS STORY, AND YOU NEED TO REMEMBER THAT. ALSO REMEMBER FROM THIS SECOND VERSE THAT JOSEPH WAS 17 YEARS OLD WHEN THESE THINGS TOOK PLACE. NOW, THIS IS GOING TO BECOME VERY IMPORTANT AS WE GO THROUGH HIS STORY, BECAUSE WHEN HE WAS 17 YEARS OLD, JOSEPH BROUGHT UNTO HIS FATHER HIS BROTHER'S EVIL REPORT. IT SAYS IN VERSE 2, AND IN VERSE 3 IT SAYS, NOW ISRAEL, OR JACOB, LOVED JOSEPH MORE THAN ALL HIS CHILDREN BECAUSE HE WAS THE SON OF HIS OLD AGE, AND HE MADE HIM A COAT OF MANY COLORS. AND SO AGAIN, IF YOU GO BACK INTO THE STORY OF JACOB OR ISRAEL, HE MARRIED RACHEL, AND RACHEL WAS HIS FAVORITE WIFE, he was, SHE WAS THE ONE THAT HE REALLY LOVED AND WANTED TO MARRY, BUT HE WOUND UP BEING TRICKED BY THE FATHER-IN-LAW, AND THE FATHER-IN-LAW ACTUALLY GAVE HIM LEAH, THE OLDER SISTER, AND JACOB DIDN'T LIKE LEAH. AND BECAUSE OF THIS, GOD SHUT UP THE WOMB OF RACHEL, AND SHE DIDN'T HAVE CHILDREN AT FIRST. LEAH HAD FOUR SONS BEFORE uh, FINALLY RACHEL GAVE HER SERVANT uh, TO JACOB to, TO HAVE CHILDREN BY HER IN ANY WAY. Uh, SHE WOUND UP FINALLY HAVING TWO SONS. ONE OF THEM WAS JOSEPH, AND ONE OF THEM WAS BENJAMIN. AND and BECAUSE JOSEPH WAS THE FIRSTBORN OF HIS FAVORITE WIFE, JACOB LOVED JOSEPH ABOVE THE OTHER CHILDREN. ALSO, JOSEPH WAS THE SON OF HIS OLD AGE, IS WHAT IT SAYS. SO IN VERSE 3, IT SAYS, NOW ISRAEL LOVED JOSEPH MORE THAN ALL HIS CHILDREN BECAUSE HE WAS THE SON OF HIS OLD AGE, AND HE MADE HIM A COAT OF MANY COLORS. AND IN VERSE 4, AND WHEN HIS BRETHREN SAW THAT THEIR FATHER LOVED HIM MORE THAN ALL HIS BRETHREN, THEY HATED HIM AND COULD NOT SPEAK PEACEABLY UNTO HIM. NOW, I MENTIONED THIS REAL BRIEFLY IN THE INTRODUCTION, BUT SOME PEOPLE INTERPRET JOSEPH AS BEING JUST A SPOILED BRAT THAT WENT AROUND uh, FLAUNTING THE FACT THAT HIS FATHER LOVED HIM MORE THAN THE OTHER BROTHERS, AND THEY BELIEVE THAT HE BROUGHT ALL OF THIS CRITICISM UPON HIMSELF. BUT THIS RIGHT HERE SAYS THAT ISRAEL, OR JACOB, WAS THE ONE WHO MADE HIM THE COAT OF MANY COLORS, AND WHEN HIS BROTHERN SAW THAT THEIR FATHER LOVED HIM MORE THAN ALL HIS BROTHERN, THEY HATED HIM. THIS LINKS THEIR HATRED to, uh, FOR JOSEPH TO WHAT JACOB DID. AND HERE'S ONE OF THE LESSONS THAT WE CAN LEARN FROM THIS IS THAT, YOU KNOW WHAT, A PARENT IS NOT SUPPOSED TO PREFER ONE CHILD OVER ANOTHER, REGARDLESS OF WHETHER ONE CHILD IS MORE uh, BEAUTIFUL THAN THE OTHER, MORE TALENTED THAN THE OTHER, MORE OBEDIENT THAN THE OTHER, OR WHATEVER. MAN, I BELIEVE THAT JACOB IS THE ONE WHO IS AT FAULT TO A VERY LARGE DEGREE FOR THE BRETHREN HATING HIM. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS OVER IN JAMES CHAPTER 3, VERSE 16, IT SAYS, WHERE ENVYING AND STRIFE IS, THERE IS CONFUSION AND EVERY EVIL WORK. 
WHEN YOU GET ENVIOUS OF ANOTHER PERSON, THAT JUST OPENS UP A DOOR TO ANYTHING THAT THE DEVIL WANTS TO DO IN YOUR LIFE. AND SO THE ENVY, THE JEALOUSY THAT THESE BROTHERS HAD AGAINST JOSEPH, I DON'T BELIEVE IT WAS CAUSED BY JOSEPH. AT THE VERY WORST, THE WORST THAT ANYBODY CAN ATTRIBUTE TO JOSEPH IN THIS SITUATION IS JUST IMMATURITY, THAT MAYBE IF HE HAD BEEN AS MATURE AS HE WAS SUPPOSED TO BE, THAT MAYBE HE COULD HAVE SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER DISSIPATED THE a SPECIAL ATTENTION AND LOVE AND THIS COAT OF MANY COLORS THAT HIS FATHER GAVE HIM, AND HE come, SOMEHOW COULD HAVE uh, MITIGATED THEIR REJECTION OF HIM OR SOMETHING. BUT that, THAT'S THE WORST THAT YOU COULD EVER ATTRIBUTE TO HIM, THAT HE JUST MAYBE WASN'T AS MATURE AS HE WAS SUPPOSED TO BE. BUT THE FACT THAT IT WAS, it was HIS FATHER'S PREFERENCE OF HIM THAT PUT HIM IN THIS SITUATION WITH HIS BROTHER, AND THEY HATED HIM BECAUSE OF IT. AND THEN IN VERSE 5, IT SAYS, AND JOSEPH DREAMED A DREAM, AND HE TOLD IT HIS BRETHREN, AND THEY HATED HIM YET THE MORE. NOW, AGAIN, THERE IS NO INDICATION THAT HE DID THIS IN A WAY THAT HE WAS RUBBING THEIR NOSES IN IT AND SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER USING THIS TO PUT THEM DOWN. I BELIEVE THIS IS JUST THE INNOCENCY OF A 17-YEAR-OLD KID THAT GOD GAVE THIS DREAM, AND THIS DREAM WAS ABOUT JOSEPH BEING PROMOTED, PROMOTED TO SUCH A DEGREE THAT EVEN HIS BROTHERN WOULD COME AND BOW DOWN TO HIM. I DON'T BELIEVE HE WAS SAYING THIS IN A WAY OF TRYING TO PUT THEM DOWN. IT WAS JUST, HE WAS EXCITED. AGAIN, YOU MIGHT BE ABLE TO SAY THAT IF HE WAS MORE MATURE, HE MIGHT COULD HAVE ANTICIPATED THEIR REJECTION AND MAYBE HAVE KEPT THIS TO HIMSELF. YOU KNOW, I HAD A FRIEND, AND I WON'T GO INTO THE DETAIL, I WON'T TELL YOU WHO THIS IS, BUT I HAD A FRIEND THAT HE WAS ALWAYS BLABBING HIS VISION, AND HE WOULD SAY THINGS THAT WERE WAY OUT THERE, AND MOST OF IT NEVER CAME TO PASS. AND I HAD FRIENDS, MUTUAL FRIENDS COME TO ME, AND THEY'D SAY, YOU NEED TO TELL THIS GUY BECAUSE HE SOMETIMES MINISTERED WITH ME, AND YOU NEED TO TELL HIM TO JUST QUIET DOWN AND NOT SAY THIS. AND IF HE'S BELIEVING FOR THESE THINGS, LET HIM BELIEVE FOR IT, BUT DON'T SAY IT IN FRONT OF PEOPLE. AND THEY TRIED TO GET ME TO RESTRICT HIM. AND I SAID, YOU JUST DON'T UNDERSTAND. I SAID, THAT'S WHO THIS GUY IS. IF I WAS TO SIT HERE AND MAKE HIM SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER CHANGE AND NOT SHARE HIS VISION, AND NOT BE BOLD WITH IT. IT WOULD it'd BE AGAINST HIS PERSONALITY. THIS IS JUST WHO HE IS. AND IT WASN'T NECESSARILY THAT HE WAS DOING IT, TRYING TO PROMOTE HIMSELF. HE WAS JUST AN EXCITED GUY, AND HE WAS ALWAYS SAYING THESE THINGS, AND SOMETIMES HE WOULD OVERSTATE IT AND EMBELLISH IT, AND HE'S NOW GONE TO BE WITH THE LORD, AND SOME OF THOSE THINGS HE SAID DID NOT COME TO PASS. BUT YOU CAN'T JUST MAKE A PERSON BE DIFFERENT THAN WHO THEY ARE. I BELIEVE THAT JOSEPH HERE WAS NOTHING BUT JUST EXCITED BECAUSE GOD HAD BEEN SHOWING HIM THINGS, AND HE JUST BEGAN TO BLAB IT. AGAIN, THE WORST YOU COULD ASCRIBE TO HIM IN THIS SITUATION, I THINK, IS JUST MAYBE IMMATURITY. Uh, PROBABLY IN HINDSIGHT, HE MIGHT HAVE KEPT HIS CARDS A LITTLE CLOSER TO HIS VEST AND NOT HAVE SHOWN HIS HAND TO OTHER PEOPLE. BUT THAT'S NOT SOMETHING you, I DON'T BELIEVE YOU CAN BLAME HIM FOR. SO IN VERSE 6, IT SAYS, HE SAID UNTO HIS BROTHER, AND SAYS, HERE I PRAY YOU THIS DREAM WHICH I HAVE DREAMED. FOR BEHOLD, WE WERE BINDING SHEAVES IN THE FIELD, AND LO, MY SHEAF AROSE, AND ALSO STOOD UPRIGHT, AND BEHOLD, YOUR SHEAVES STOOD ROUND ABOUT, AND MADE OBEISANCE TO MY SHEAF. WHAT THIS WAS TALKING ABOUT WAS THAT JOSEPH WAS GOING TO BE PROMOTED ABOVE HIS BROTHERN, AND THAT THEY WOULD BOW DOWN TO HIM. AND THAT'S THE WAY THEY TOOK IT. IN THE EIGHTH VERSE, IT SAYS, AND HIS BROTHERN SAID UNTO HIM, SHALT THOU INDEED REIGN OVER US, OR SHALT THOU INDEED HAVE DOMINION OVER US? AND THEY HATED HIM YET THE MORE FOR HIS DREAMS AND FOR HIS WORDS. SO YOU CAN SEE BY THE BROTHERS' REACTIONS THAT THE INTERPRETATION OF THIS DREAM WAS VERY CLEAR, THAT JOSEPH WAS GOING TO PREVAIL ABOVE HIS BRETHREN, AND HIS BRETHREN WOULD SOMEDAY ACTUALLY COME AND BOW DOWN TO HIM. AND THIS DREAM uh, WAS REPEATED IN A LITTLE DIFFERENT WAY, BUT uh, IT SAYS IN THE NINTH VERSE, AND HE DREAMED YET ANOTHER DREAM AND TOLD HIS BROTHREN AND SAID, BEHOLD, I HAVE DREAMED A DREAM MORE, AND BEHOLD, THE SUN AND THE MOON AND THE ELEVEN STARS MADE OBEISANCE UNTO ME. YOU KNOW, OVER IN GENESIS CHAPTER 41, VERSE 32, THIS IS WHEN JOSEPH WAS STANDING BEFORE PHARAOH AND INTERPRETING HIS DREAMS, AND JOSEPH SAID THIS, HE SAYS, AND AS FOR THAT THE DREAM WAS DOUBLED UNTO PHARAOH TWICE, IT IS BECAUSE THE THING IS ESTABLISHED BY GOD, AND GOD WILL SHORTLY BRING IT TO PASS. SO OUT OF JOSEPH'S OWN MOUTH LATER, AS HE WAS SPEAKING UNDER THE INSPIRATION OF THE HOLY SPIRIT, HE SAID THAT WHEN A DREAM IS DOUBLED, IN OTHER WORDS, THE SAME POINT BEING MADE BY TWO DIFFERENT DREAMS, THAT MEANS THAT THE DREAM IS ESTABLISHED AND IT WILL SHORTLY COME TO PASS. IT CAN'T BE CHANGED. YOU KNOW, SOMETIMES, uh, 
Of course, we all have dreams that are like pizza dreams that have no sense, no meaning to them whatsoever. But God speaks through dreams. God speaks to me through dreams all of the time. I mean, it would be unusual to go a week without God revealing something to me in dreams. I dream all of the time. Not everybody's like that, but God still speaks through dreams today. But many times, God will show you something that's going to happen for the purpose of changing it, maybe as a warning so that you could take evasive action and do something. That happened with uh, uh, Pharaoh in the 41st chapter as we get over there. But once a dream comes, the same point, the same, the same uh, point is being made through a dream and it's repeated. Joseph said that that means that it cannot be changed. So here's Joseph having two dreams basically saying the same thing, that he was going to be exalted above, above his brethren. And because it was repeated, that meant that it couldn't be changed. This would happen. And it goes on to say in the next verse, in verse 10, and he told it to his father. He told this dream to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to the earth? So it was very clear Jacob understood what this dream meant. It meant that Joseph was going to be promoted and that Jacob and his mother, that's the moon and the star, uh, the, the sun and the moon, and then the 11 stars where his 11 brethren were going to come and bow down to him. And his father rebuked him for it. And it says in verse 11, And his brother envied him, but his father observed the same. Even though his father rebuked him and basically said, You're in arrogance for saying this, um, he observed the same. He held these things in his heart. You know, this is the same thing that was said about Mary when she uh, rebuked Jesus for being gone for three days and speaking to the elders in the temple. And he rebuked her basically and said, Don't you know that I should be about my father's business? And it says that she observed these things in her heart. She pondered them in her heart. She may not have understood it, but she thought about it. I think this is the same thing that happened with Jacob. So anyway, this is very important. We're just getting started on this. I'm going to be going through this in more detail. But let me say that these two dreams are critical to the story of Joseph. And you may not have God reveal His will for your life to you in a physical dream at night, but every one of us has dreams. Every one of us, God reveals things to you and He does it to prepare you because in between when God shows you what His purpose for your life is and when you see that come to pass, there is going to be a lot of time and there are going to be opposition and there's going to be opposition and there's going to be problems. And if you don't hold on to those dreams that God has given you, I guarantee you it's going to make things much, much worse. So this is really important. I'm, I'm out of time today, but on our program tomorrow, I'm going to start here and I'm going to start sharing with you about how important it is to have a dream, whether it's at a nighttime dream or whether it's while your eyes are open and you just see what God has for you. You need to have a vision of what God has for your life. And I tell you, if you don't have a vision for your life, you're, you're going you're gonna to have multiple problems that you don't need. I'm out of time, but again, we're offering this teaching on Joseph. I've got it in DVD and CD form. This is taken from my television programs. And we're also offering the uh, teachings, of lessons from Elijah and lessons from David. I tell you, all of these things would just be a blessing to you. And so I encourage you to please get this teaching. It would help you tremendously. Listen to our announcer as he gives you the information and then join me again tomorrow for the gospel truth. Andrew is offering his booklet, Lessons from Joseph, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet Andrew's complete series, Lessons from Joseph, is available in either a CD or DVD album or as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. 
or you can get these products as part of the lessons package in your choice of either CD, DVD, or USB from Lessons from Joseph, Lessons from David, and Lessons from Elijah. Also, this package will include the Lessons from Joseph booklet. These teachings will give you the chance to learn from the successes and mistakes of three very powerful but very human men of God. The Lessons Package has a catalog value of $110, but you can receive all these valuable resources today for just $80. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get these products. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. You were created with a purpose, written in the heart of God long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. You were born for such a time as this, to be a disciple, to leave this world behind and follow Him. You were designed for a destiny, one that only you can fulfill. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We want to help you to know God, experience His unconditional love, to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. I'd like to encourage you to come and join us for our campus days on March the 15th through the 17th. This is where we just let people come and sample what Karis Bible College is all about. You'll hear from all of our instructors, our praise and worship people. You'll get a taste of what Karis life is all about and I think it would really encourage you. It's been some of the best meetings we've ever had is these campus days. So remember this is March the 15th through the 17th. If you've ever thought about coming to Karis Bible College, you need to be with us and experience campus days. Our Karis Bible College, I believe, is second to none as far as the spiritual material that's being put out and the impact that's being made on students. But did you know our facilities are wanting? We actually had over 550 students that couldn't come this year because they didn't have housing. We need to start providing housing, activity center, cafeteria, all kinds of things. And in order to do that, I need a lot of new partners. I ask you to go to awmi.net slash campus and check it out and become a partner with Karis Bible College today.